And we did offer Governor Cuomo to come on this week's show, but his team did not make him available. Let's get into where things stand with this week's panel. Karen DeWitt is from New York State Public Radio, and David Lombardo hosts the Capitol Press Room, also on Public Radio. Thank you both for being here. You're welcome. So let's talk about the sexual harassment allegations against the governor first. I just want to go over them really quickly. It's from Lindsay Boylan, a former top aide at the Empire State Development Corporation, a state agency. She's now running for Manhattan Borough President. She's alleging that on a plane ride with the governor, he offered to play strip poker with her. And then at a different point, he, uh, she was alone in his office with him and he tried to forcibly kiss her. These are obviously very serious allegations. Karen, how has the governor's office responded? Well, I would just say it true. These are very devastating uh, allegations. Um, they've denied it. Uh, Lindsay Boylan did refer to the things that she brought up this week in a tweet way back in December, and Cuomo denied it all, said, you know, women should be heard, but none of this happened. He hasn't spoken, but he's had his top aides say we were on all of those plane rides in October of 2017 when this allegedly happened. We never heard anything like that. Cuomo had one of his best friends, I guess, his longtime top aide and associate Stephen Cohen talk about the governor's character. He's never seen him behave in any way like that. He said, well, he's a tough guy. He gives you his opinion. He's a very, you know, hard charging boss, but he's only doing it, you know, for our own good to make us, you know, better people and for striving for excellence. But he said he had never seen anything like that. He did admit that he did not work for state government when Lindsey Boyland was employed. So, you know, there's that. There, there is that, and I, I will say in the statement that they released, they addressed the, the plane ride allegations, what he said about the strip poker. In that statement, they didn't specifically point to the allegations about him kissing her. So I'm assuming he's going to be asked about that at some point. We're taping on Friday morning before the governor has given his briefing today. So I'm assuming it will come up if he holds a briefing. If he holds a briefing. Yeah, that's, that's a big question. It is a big question. Dave, how is the legislature responding to this? In the past, Democrats have been very strong on coming out against sexual harassment allegations. When those harassment allegations are against Republicans or Democrats who aren't the governor, uh, right now we've seen statements from the legislative leaders that have basically been like, boy, this is not good. But they've sh stopped short of actually saying we need an investigation. Where we have seen the calls for investigation is from Republican lawmakers, many of whom had nothing to say about this type of thing when Donald Trump was in the White House, and some rank-and-file Democrats. Whether that's going to be enough at the end of the day, though, to get some sort of investigation, whether by uh, JCOPE, the entity that theoretically would have oversight of something like this, but you know, has its own problems because the governor is so entangled with that, or whether maybe the attorney general gets involved. Theoretically, she could get a referral from the governor to look at criminal charges. And there's also some questions about whether the Senate Ethics Committee could look at this. Uh, the chair of that committee, Alessandra Biaggi, right now is trying to find out whether she has the ability to go after the governor in that capacity. Well, no. the, well the big problem, as you said, Dave, is we don't have a functioning ethics oversight board we in can this get to in a couple of years. Yeah, because, because it's really been tainted by Governor Cuomo essentially controlling Jacob. And yeah. actually, they did investigate some sexual harassment charges from some women in the legislature, and they did a very bad job of it. The women said that they felt like they were the ones on trial. So they're not really all that well equipped for this anyway. So that leaves kind of a big gaping hole. Does it hang out there? You know, how does the governor address it? And I guess the, the bigger thing that we should mention is no other woman has come forward at this point. This is one right. account. And, and if somebody else did, that that really, really, really changes the dynamic. There was another staffer who worked for the governor when he was in the Clinton administration 20 years ago, Karen Hinton. She also worked in New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio's office. Right. She wrote in the Daily News this week, basically laying out a culture of bullying and hostility at the governor's office. Yeah, she didn't mention sexual harassment, but she did mention a toxic work environment where the governor constantly demeans his staff and acts like the only reason why they have their job is because of his, you know, just his goodwill and just creating, a, you know, an environment where, you know, people essentially feel bad about themselves, which is not, not a good place to be in. Which is interesting because the Cuomo aides that I've talked to over the years describe things exactly like that. It's a very, very high pressured environment. Now that's something I have heard of and, you know, experienced a little bit of it myself in a very public <laughs> event that in December of 2017 where the governor said some things that, you know, ended up being kind of, what kind of went viral about, um, you know, my questions about sexual harassment. So I have experienced, you know, that. And 
I mean, I guess, you know, as, as we become more aware of these things, it is a bullying style, certainly. We had uh, Assemblyman Ron Kim saying that the governor threatened to destroy him if he kept criticizing the governor at uh, nursing home, something the governor that's denied. But certainly there is a lot of accounts of, of a bullying way of being a manager, which I think in the modern era really is not as acceptable as it might have been maybe in the 1980s or 1990s. You know, there's other ways of getting work out of people, like right. collaboration, praise, you know, and it does, <laughs> yeah. it does work, you know, you can, you can do different management styles. This isn't the only way to get, you know, what the governor says he wants, which is excellence out of his people. Also this week, before we run out of time, a long awaited budget hearing on health. Health Commissioner Dr. Howard Zucker finally testified about nursing homes. I watched the entire testimony of him. I found it very anticlimactic. Yes. I did not think that lawmakers lived up to the hype that they were going for for this hearing. Dave, what did you think? I thought that when we had the opening with Tom O'Mara, the senator from the Southern Tier, saying, we need you to swear in, I thought we were going to have some fireworks, like you're mm -hmm. saying. But really, no, anticlimactic. We've been building up to this for months. And it was really just a lot of grandstanding by lawmakers on both sides of the aisle with their concerns. and. Howard Zucker maintaining the party line about nursing homes and nursing home data, saying, you know, we did everything right, we reacted uh, right in the moment with the best knowledge we had, and saying with regards to nursing home data, uh, this new story about uh, the DOJ inquiry really tied our hands. So we didn't really learn anything, and that's why I think today we're still seeing calls for more information and uh, potentially even more subpoenas to sit down in a different setting. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Zucker was really good at sticking to his story, showing that they are not budging from this narrative, even though the narrative isn't working that well for them. They're hoping if they stick to it, maybe eventually they will win out. Which I, I gotta say, just on Dave's point, maybe it was a good thing that we didn't have so many fireworks yesterday. Maybe we're getting to a point where the temperature is being lowered a little bit on this issue. I know that's uh, <laughs> very optimistic. I bet I'm wrong, but I guess we'll have to watch over the next few weeks. Uh, the legislature could act at any point, and we'll see. Right. Karen DeWitt from New York State Public Radio, Dave Lombardo from the Capitol Press Room, also on public radio. Thanks so much.